Gene Sherrard here. Welcome to our online feature, Seattle Now and Then 360. This week, we pay a visit to Seattle Center, soon to host Bumbershoot, now nearing its half-century anniversary. Our 360-degree video was recorded at the 2019 Folklife Festival last Memorial Day. And now our story. A willing suspension from sky high to high drama. Since 1972, Seattle's summers have opened and closed with multi-day festivals. Northwest Folklife on Memorial Day weekend and Bumbershoot on Labor Day weekend. Hosted at Seattle Center, both events signal a change of seasons. They also inherit the legacies of the Century 21 Exposition, a.k.a. the 1962 Seattle World's Fair, whose revitalizing alterations now and then has oft explored. Our then photo, looking northwest during the fair, features one station of the Union 76 Skyride, located at the former corner of 2nd Avenue and Republican Street. Traversing 1,400 feet and reaching the height of a six-floor building, its bucket-shaped orange cars provided a bird's-eye view as their overhead wheels rolled above the grounds. When I experienced the still-operating ride two years later, The three-passenger limit meant my father stayed behind while my mom, little brother, and I floated and gloated. Built by von Roll Ironworks of Switzerland, then the world's largest producer of aerial tramways, the Skyride became one of the fair's most popular and, for only 50 cents, affordable excursions. Union 76 gas stations offered buy two, get one free tickets with every fill-up, recalls historian Alan Stein. The Skyride Southern Station also stood only steps from the monorail. Visible from the Skyride, the Seattle Playhouse, built for the fair in only 34 days, beckoned from Mercer Street. The venue showcased national and international acts from the Juilliard String Quartet and Japan's Bunraku Theater to the Pacific Ballet and Hal Holbrook's one-man show, Mark Twain Tonight. Reportedly, Holbrook suggested it as the perfect location for a repertory theater. The newly formed Seattle Repertory Theater took up Holbrook's challenge in November 1963, fronting inaugural productions of King Lear and Max Frisch's The Firebugs. Original troupe members included Marjorie Nelson and a young John Gilbert, later stalwarts of the local acting community, Nelson married prominent architect and preservationist Victor Steinbrook, neatly squaring the circle. In the early 1980s, the Skyride's Northern Station bowed to what we might call a theatrical suspension of disbelief when the rep departed the aging playhouse to create state-of-the-art digs on a nearby corner lot. As an aspiring young actor, I witnessed this vision beginning to assume reality when I was fortunate to be cast in two plays in the inaugural season. The result has, like the World's Fair, become a gift to Seattle. Through the decades, by showcasing a steady diet of star-studded, groundbreaking, and world-class theater, the rep has, like the Skyride, become a high-wire act. In our then-photo, the spiny, orange, gazebo-like terminus of the Union 76 Skyride now can be found at the Washington State Fair in Puyallup, where it was moved in 1980. Today's Skyride trip runs $5, 10 times the 1962 fair. By comparison, a ride to the top of the Space Needle, $1 in 1962, today starts at $32.50. The monorail offers the best deal of all, a mere two fifty per ride, only five times the 1962 rate. In today's scene, you can see the Rep's main stage, 842-seat Bagley Wright Theater, peeping through the trees, and its 282-seat Leo Kreilsheimer Theater, the Leo K added in 1996. The unusual green and maroon facade is said to refer to Granny Smith apples and the bark of our indigenous madrona trees. Q. 
Keep listening for a short scene from my 1984 radio drama adaptation of Don Quixote de la Mancha, featuring Marjorie Nelson and John Gilbert. Father Pera Perez! Father Perez! Maria, what is it? Ah, you found him. Oh, he's returned. He's home again, yes. But for the life of me, he's not returned. Out in heaven's name, Maria. The body's back, but the mind is missing. Mm. It's those books again. When did he arrive? This very hour. Shamefully, on the back of a donkey. Oh, no. Oh, you should see him, Father Perez, mm. bruised and battered to within an inch of his life. Oh, I've never seen a man so black and blue. Yeah. And, Father, yeah. the way he yes. talks... Well, what does he say? Oh, he goes on so I don't understand the half of it. But when we asked him how he came to injure himself, ah. he says, Giants, says he, he took a great fall from his horse, battling ten godless giants. Oh, so now there are giants in the dance. It's worse and worse. And worse. Hmm. He insists his name is no longer Alonso Quijano, but Quixote of all things. Don Quixote de la Mancha. De la Mancha. <laughs> A knight errant, he says. Oh, no. And when his niece tried to convince him otherwise, yeah. he simply replied, I know who I am and who I may be if I choose. Oh, dear. Oh, if oh, only those dear. damnable books of his had never been written. Yeah. A curse. A thousand curses on every book of chivalry. Oh, will you come, Father? Of course, of course, Maria. You go on ahead, and I'll stop and fetch our friend, oh. Master Nicholas. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank yes, you. Yes, now run along, and I'll...